<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Be The Bank. My name is Robert Haitha, your host, founder of Fix Notes, and the resolution specialist on over 10,000 assets. So I've understood this market over the last decade, and I wanna bring that knowledge to you to help you maximize your chance of success in the secondary mortgage market. So today's episode, we're gonna be learning about mortgage note investing explained in five levels, inspired by the Wired series. So we're gonna start at the student level, go to teenage years, college years, MBA student, and then a professional level understanding of the secondary mortgage market. So let's get right into it. All right, let's rock and roll. So it's episode number 49, but as you know, you can watch this show anytime into the future. Use the timestamp links at the bottom of the episode to skip to any section that's most relevant to you in your mortgage note journey. So today we're gonna start with explaining the industry and five levels of difficulty. Then we're gonna be talking asset acquisition opportunities, then case studies. We're gonna learn about some sales and workouts to really put the pedal to the metal here. So let's get started. Mortgage note investing in five levels. So as we always start with, if you've seen this Wired series, level one is the child level understanding of the secondary mortgage market. So the first question is, I'd pose to this hypothetical child is, do you know what an IOU is? An IOU, if you don't, is just a promise to repay someone uh, when you loan them some money. So if, if you're borrowing money, you sign the IOU to say, I'll pay you back this money at a later date. So let's just envision a scenario here. So I am a, um, a student, I forgot my lunch money, and uh, fortunately my friend can lend me some money so that I can purchase, uh, buy some food with a couple bucks. So in exchange, I pull out a piece of paper and I write at the top, I owe you the amount of money or, or maybe just one lunch. I sign my name at the bottom. We might even have a teacher witness it if we wanna get really official. So my friend accepts that note, they give me the money to buy the lunch or they buy a lunch for me. And so when they're done, they're eating their food, they're like, I'm a little bit hungry still. I wanna uh, get some dessert, but I don't have any money because I lend it already to, to me. So instead, they trade the IOU to another student who is maybe a little bit more health conscious and they have some chocolate cake that they exchange for the IOU so that instead of getting that lunch for the uh, person who lent me the money, the new cake student can now get a free lunch in the future from me by cashing in that IOU. So in this case, the everyone is happy at the end of the day. The chocolate cost, cake costs a little less than a full lunch. So the student who's traded their chocolate cake away has a better deal because now they're owed an entire lunch. And the um, student who lent me the money who didn't have any cash for their dessert, they're happy because they could trade that IOU for the dessert. And then tomorrow, when I remember some lunch money, I can pay back the IOU and clean slate, everybody's squared up again. So this is essentially a paper promise. The IOU is a representation of the money that is owed in uh, a future date. So that's essentially what creates the asset in this business. It's the paper promise, the IOU. And if we just summarize that in the bank context, banks make loans to people who need money. The document they sign, the IOU becomes the asset between the borrower and the lender. And then investors can buy that note from the lender to become the lender themselves. And as we scale up to the teenage level, we can make a little bit more sense of that. So in this case, somebody doesn't have enough money to buy a house. So they go to the bank to borrow what they need to purchase that home. So in exchange for the loan, for the money to buy the house, the borrower signs a note, which is the IOU, the promise to pay. It includes the terms around the repayment, and they also sign a mortgage. So that's the next level of complexity here. The mortgage specifies the collateral that is securing the debt. So if they don't pay back the money, they have to give the house, the collateral, back to the bank or to the lender. The allonge transfers ownership of the note and the assignment of mortgage transfers ownership of the mortgage. So those four documents make up a mortgage note deal. The note, the mortgage, the assignment, and the allonge, which create this asset that then can be sold on the secondary market to investors. So now the borrower, once the loan is sold, is making their monthly payments to the new owner of the loan, not to the bank that they borrowed the money from originally, but to the company that the bank sold the loan to. Until the note is satisfied and then the mortgage is released from the title, this note will remain a secured lien attached to the collateral property. So to summarize that, when money is borrowed, 
The promise to repay the debt with interest is formalized with those documents, the mortgage, the note, the assignment, and the allonge to create an asset that can be bought and sold on the secondary market. And all the secondary market is, is, is a marketplace that is the next step beyond the origination of the loan. So not the people who created the loan, but other investors that are in this secondary marketplace. So let's move on to the next level, which is the college student level. And in this level of complexity, we're gonna talk about a little more about the secondary mortgage market in general. There's many different types of real estate assets out there. And the primary factors for this niche in the market, the secondary mortgage market, mortgage notes, are whether a loan is secured or unsecured. So that just means whether it's secured to the property, to the collateral, or if it's unsecured and is no longer protected by the underlying real estate. There's no collateral anymore to enforce the debt. There's also another factor here, which is the lien position, whether the loan is in first position or second position or third or fourth or another level in the repayment schedule. So essentially, if you are a first mortgage holder, you get paid right after all the property taxes are paid. You're the first person to receive money from the sale of the property or in those monthly payments. If you're in a junior position, as long as you have equity, which is the value above the amount that the borrower owes to the first position loan, then you'll receive a full payoff as well. And then finally, there's the factor of the status of payments, whether or not the loan is performing or non-performing. And in the secondary mortgage market, assets are traded where there are no active payments being made. Some borrowers have hit hard times and aren't making their monthly mortgage payments, and banks will sell those non-performing loans because they don't have the resources to help those borrowers. And that's where the secondary mortgage market investors come in, note investors who are more entrepreneurial and can work with borrowers hand in hand to help them get back on track. This is where we can add value to the business. So investors typically um, know all of those factors, whether it's secured or unsecured, first or second position, and performing or non-performing before they get into the mortgage note deal. But they also need to value the collateral, so the property that's securing the debt. They'll need to know if it's a single family residence or a condo or vacant land. They need to know what that property is worth so they can calculate the equity. They also need to analyze the borrower by looking at a credit report and their unpaid taxes. This is called the underwriting process. And then they also need to make sure that all the loan documents are in place. They're complete, they're enforceable, and they're documented properly. And that there's no issues to the title to the property via public records. So that's the due diligence process, researching all this information to make sure that there's a good deal to be had here. So if everything looks good, the investor will make an offer to the bank or to the seller to um, provide some profit to them while also offering a fair price to the company or the bank that owns the loan at the time. So now once the investor owns the loan, they'll either work with the non-performing borrower to get them back on track or make sure that the performing borrower continues to make those monthly payments. So that's the college student level where we can summarize it by saying, investors analyze borrowers' properties, loan docs, and public records to determine whether a mortgage note is a wise investment. And then a price is calculated for a positive return on invest <laughs> investment. And if accepted, the investor manages that loan themselves. So before we move on to the next level, which is MBA student, let's take a quick look at, uh, at the fish out back. And I think that there is a, a frog in there. Yeah, there's a frog right in the middle of the screen underneath one of those lotus flowers, those lotus petals. He's busy uh, waiting for a bug. And no, no birds in that hyper zoomed in lens that we're looking at. All right, so let's move on then to the MBA student level. And in this level, we're gonna talk about the whole funnel. What is the various verticals of the business when it comes to note investing? So in most real estate businesses, you, if you're familiar with, with this world, the top of the funnel, the acquisition efforts are really the most critical and they'll make or break a sustainable business model. So the first obstacle for note investors is overcoming the consistent source of deal flow. Being able to have a good flow of product coming in that they can analyze and make offers on. So there's websites like paperstack.com where retail investors can peruse a marketplace of debt for sale. Uh, but better yet, direct relationships with loan sellers is the absolute best way to find deals for sale. And using networks like the Mortgage Note Mastermind or um, finding brokers who can connect you with direct sellers is a great way to find these deals on the marketplace. You'll get better pricing and you'll have more nationwide investment options. 
So from there, comprehensive due diligence is critical. And I would say that the due diligence process is a bit more commoditized um, than the relationship centric sourcing uh, aspects. So while knowing how to do diligence is something that you can learn on this show, and we have tons of resources for free available to you to maximize your due diligence efforts, actually building those relationships with your sellers is going to be the critical factor here and something that it's difficult to teach how to build relationships. So that's going to be very important as a note investor at the top of the funnel. Next up is portfolio management, and that's the onboarding of recently purchased loans to your loan servicer, making sure that the performing loans continue to pay as agreed, making sure property taxes are paid if those monthly payments are escrowed with your loan servicer, and then making sure that if you're buying junior liens, that the senior lien in front of you remains current. And then finally, if a loan goes into default um, or they stop paying, or maybe if you just purchased it as a non-performing loan, then you need to move on to the resolutions or loss mitigation side of the business. And in this area, you're going to be conducting outbound campaigns to reach the borrowers and get them back on track with their monthly payments. And we give them tons of options to modify their loans or pay them off at a discount. And if all else fails, the enforcement of the security instrument here, the mortgage, can be conducted through the foreclosure process. So occasionally borrowers are no longer interested in retaining the property and they may have moved and just done what we call a strategic default where they're like, I'm not paying the loan anymore. And in that case, we need to work towards taking back the property through the REO process. So that's at the MBA level, which we can summarize by calling it the acquisitions, portfolio management and resolutions functions make up the critical operation of a note business. So if you make consistent er efforts in all three of these areas, you will achieve success. And watching this show and reviewing all the episodes we've done on due diligence, portfolio management, and the acquisition side of the business can absolutely get you to the next level here. Now on the professional side, level five, now here's where I'm excited to explain to you the mortgage note industry at the highest level. So first things first, if you have the ambition to grow a mortgage note business, you wanna start with a Delaware statutory trust. So there's many different vehicles that you can create as your entity for growth. One would just be a simple LLC or an S corp or a C corp, but really where you want to focus if you have aspirations to scale to a large level is a Delaware statutory trust. So you'll benefit from state level provisions granted to you because you have a national chartered bank as trustee. So this avoids a lot of the costs and complexities with the state by state debt buyer licenses, debt collection licenses. And by essentially having a bank trustee who's nationally chartered in the state of Delaware for the Delaware Statutory Trust, you're able to sidestep a lot of those state level concerns with a more blanket federally chartered provision. So that's the first thing for a professional to understand. You wanna make sure your entity is correct. Next, you really want to automate everything possible before you bring on human resources. So start with the technology to optimize your acquisitions and your due diligence efforts. Make sure that you're able to turn around bids very, very quickly because you've automated your research process. Then move on to portfolio management audits to streamline your resolution system. Finally, you're gonna document all of your SOPs. You're gonna deploy your employees into these processes when the technology isn't feasible. So don't make the mistake that the past industrial revolution businesses did, which was, not really a mistake at the time because the technology didn't exist, but they had to lay off a ton of employees when technology was able to replace them. So we start with the technology and then we plug in employees into a much more sustainable position where they can grow and leverage the technology with us. So next is to build out a team for each of these silos of activity, the acquisitions and the due diligence, the portfolio management and the resolution side of the business. So you want to stay consistent with your sourcing efforts. Like we said in the previous level, this is really the make or break position in real estate businesses, filling the pipeline at the top. And if you are doing everything yourself or you're not actively siloing these activities in your own mind, it's very easy to get caught up in the resolution side of the business or the portfolio management side and slack on keeping the pipeline full on the acquisitions front. So you wanna stay consistent with those sourcing efforts by putting someone in place or just delegating a certain portion of your mind to focusing consistently on acquiring loans. And then communicate that pipeline to your due diligence team because your due diligence specialists are going to wanna to know the upcoming deals that they need to analyze, what's required of them to make offers and get loans to the next phase, the portfolio managers and the resolution specialists. So 
If they are busy with deal flow, then you can expand into other asset classes to grow from your initial niche. So auto loans, commercial real estate, unsecured credit card debt, there's tons of different directions you can go once you master this first level of the business, which is making sure that you choose a niche if it's non-performing second position residential mortgages, which is one of our specialties here on the show, and then expanding from there as you've deployed all of the resources you can into the available opportunities in that specific subset. So the next thing to do as a professional note investor is to join the Mortgage Note Mastermind to collaborate with like-minded note investors to take our businesses to the top of this industry. So that's the professional level and the fifth level of complexity, which is to scale up to offer better pricing, both on the acquisitions and the actual purchase price for the loans you paid, but also the economies of scale in your operations department, build stronger relationships and more opportunity by being a bigger, better buyer, and then implement automation and a favorable structure, the Delaware Statutory Trust, for longevity as a top tier note investor. So that is it for the five levels of the note investor. We're gonna move on right here to assets for sale, which of course is so critical. Acquisitions, the top of the pipeline for note investors is important here. So I do wanna show you what we've recently listed for sale to the Mortgage Note Mastermind members after we take a look at that frog. Let's see uh, how the frog's doing over there. Oh, he's still just sitting there croaking and no birds as expected, it happens. <laughs> All right, so the first uh, portfolio that we're listing, we're listing a series of four portfolios here. The first is non-performing second liens. We have 11 assets, $243,000 unpaid principal balance, expecting to sell for just shy of 50 cents on the dollar, 49.2% of UPB. And this is less than 15% of the equity protecting this investment. So $120,000 will secure you by substantially more, a multiple of that, of positive equity in these properties. And as you see, all three of these first portfolios are pretty similar. We've done that intentionally. These are all non-performing second liens with 11 assets each, and UPB is around 244, 243 to 248,000 of principal balance. And then finally, we have a cherry pick for portfolio for number four, which is first and second liens, 25 loans with about half a million dollars of principal balance, where we're expecting that to sell for a little less, 200K, 38.9% of UPB. So this port, these four portfolios were listed uh, last week, the beginning of last week, and we have had a week long process to collect bids. Bids were due yesterday and we're currently collating those offers. And then we will be closing some of the deals with our mastermind members. So if you've watched this show before, you know that the mastermind members get first access to the loans from my clients. And in this case, all of them are going to be spoken for. We've got some really great bids from our members and we'll be closing all of these deals to the Mortgage Note Mastermind Group. So that being said, I would highly recommend re recommend that you check out the Mortgage Note Mastermind. If you are serious about taking your secondary, your second mortgage note business or your senior lien business or even some commercial product, we do have a wide range of specialties within the group, but we do specialize on the residential, non-performing and performing mortgage market then you can check out the Mortgage Note Mastermind. So we have uh, asset purchase opportunities, as you see, our masterclass video courses. We've got private events and Zoom calls every month. We have our vendor database, our forum, where you can ask questions and get free consulting, case studies, all the details from the YouTube episodes we do are included in the Mastermind Group with way more detail. We have a database of all the counties and states in the country. We include templates and calculators, our trade desk with other opportunities to buy and sell loans to other members in the group. And we offer half off our consulting for members. Now, if you've watched the show again in the past, you may notice a difference here. We now are only offering three spots at every pricing tier. The group is growing so fast. I'm very, very excited to have new five new members just this week. So we're changing the process so that instead of every 10 members, the price increasing by $10, with every three members, the price goes up by $10. So we've got two seats left at 140, and then the next three seats will be at 150 per month. So we've got four masterclass schedules released every year. These masterclasses are video courses included in the group. We started with bulk portfolio due diligence, then we did how to find and close more deals. Both of those courses are available right now. If you join the mastermind group, you can access all of the modules in those training series. And we're currently working on 90 day note investor. So this course is really cool because it's gonna teach you how to go from zero to $1,000 per month in passive income in the note business. And this course is gonna be released probably in the next week. And then finally, to end the year, we're gonna do an efficient portfolio management mastermind course to really optimize your process once you buy loans. 
And we've got tons of Zoom call recordings. These are a bunch of members. You may recognize some of these names. These are top tier people in the business. And these are all recordings of um, our Zoom monthly membership meetings, which you can access all those recordings and then be part of the live meetings going forward. All right, so that's enough of this pitch. Let's move on just one more time here. Two seats left at 140 per month. In the next three spots at 150 per month, I would highly recommend you try it out because it's a money back guarantee for the first 30 days. If you're not satisfied, you're welcome to amicably part ways here, but I'm sure you will find a ton of value here. So let's move on to the case studies. We're really blazing through this show today, keeping it quick and punchy. And today's case study, it's first case study that is, is a non-performing first lien secured by single family residential property. So this one was resolved with a loan sale. We sold the loan for $4,628. So first thing, we wanna review the fair market value, the unpaid principal balance, the taxes, and the purchase price, which we'll get to in just a second. So this property was $264,100. The taxes were 4,100. So that leaves us 260K of equity, securing our UPB, our unpaid principal balance of $9,389. So we bought that for $2,220, which is around 23.6% of the unpaid principal balance. And we sold that for 4,628. So we'll look at the, the uh, ROI there in a minute. So we love to ask these three questions. What happened, where are you now, and what do you wanna do? And generally those three questions are answered by the borrower in our resolution process. But when there's loan sales, sometimes we change uh, kind of how these questions are phrased because sometimes it's based on the investor's perspective. But in this case, it was the borrower. They responded to our outsource collector to pursue a modification agreement, which was good news. Um, they countered a 300 per month payment plan with a 200 per month payment proposal. So that would fit their finances and work for them with no down payment available. So we put together some mod terms that met their, um, in their objectives here for their financial situation at 200 per month with a $250 modification fee, which would just be putting some skin in the game and, and paying basically a break even to process the modification and get things set up. Now, a few months later, the borrower reached out and they had a pandemic hardship on this deal. So they couldn't move forward the, with the 200 per month plan, unfortunately. So in, instead, we waited another five months. There was no follow through from the borrower. And frankly, we probably weren't as on top of them as we should have been. But in the midst of the pandemic, you know, there was definitely some grace to be had there. And then rather than foreclose, we did find a non-performing loan buyer to take on this situation, who's a local investor, who's better suited to figure out this situation with the borrower. So this one took a while. It's just 30 whole months and over $800 of expenses through the due diligence, the onboarding, and the collection process to get to a sale price of $4,628. And in this case, there's a pretty good return. Uh, we'll look at that in just a minute here after we go over the takeaways. So in a high equity situation like this, initiating foreclosure would have made more sense, honestly, if we were just wanting to maximize our um, potential for resolution or our total income received on this deal, by pursuing the foreclosure, we would have encouraged the borrower to get serious and do the mod or to take back the property through the REO process and then have a very valuable property, in this case, over $260,000 property, which we could have liquidated on that market. Um, but in this case, future deal flow really took the priority here. We needed the velocity of capital. We wanted to recoup our funds so that we'd have capital for the next trade. So instead of going through a lengthy foreclosure and REO process, we instead decided to sell the loan to a non-performing loan investor. So you'll see right off the bat here that pricing was more favorable at this time than the current market. The uh, pricing has gone up this year, even with the residential side of the business um, starting to see a peak and, and there's definitely been some decreases in pricing for single family residential properties. The note business is hotter than ever because we still have plenty of equity on average in these deals. So pricing is in flux, but I wanted to make sure that that was noted here so that you're not taking these current prices um, from this previous deal as to be the current market. So in this case, the seller, my client here, earned a 43.4% return and the buyer purchased the loan for 49.3% of unpaid principal balance. So let's move on to another case study here. This is a non-performing second mortgage secured by a single family residential property that was resolved through a discounted payoff for $80,000. So this is a bit of a better deal than that small loan sale of the last one. So as we can see right off the bat, there was some uh, question marks here. The fair market value of the property was 115,000, but we didn't know what the senior lien uh, balance was. And we didn't know consequently what the equity position was. 
If you don't know how much is owed on the first lien or on the tax balances, then you can't properly calculate how much is left over for the second position loan. But we did have a UPB of $127,000, which is already more than the fair market value. So we know that the combined loan to value, the CLTV is over 100%, which means that from the borrower's perspective, it's absolutely underwater. And from our perspective, it's, it's gotta be partially underwater at the very best case scenario if the senior lien is less than 115,000. So in this case, what happened? Where are you now? And what do you wanna do? Those answers start with a borrower coma. Unfortunately, last year, the year prior to this resolution, um, the borrower fell into a coma and was not able to complete their bank modification agreement. They had something on the table at $500 principal plus interest, and they weren't able to achieve that because they fell into this medical situation. So a family friend who provided an authorization for a third party signed by the borrower to make sure that we could communicate based on this account with someone else other than the borrower was helping negotiate the finances here. So we proposed an interest only mod at $447 per month um, with a three year term. So it's interest only year one is 447 year two is closer to 500 and then year three was like 520. So there was this tiered approach to increasing payments, but with no prepayment penalty, so they would be able to pay off the loan early at any time and avoid the step rate increases of the mod. But the mod process stalled out in the final steps because good news, a local real estate investor was found to purchase the property. So instead of signing the mod docs and paying the mod fee and moving into that process, the borrower's third party here, the family friend who was helping out pivoted to get this property sold to a real estate investor. So we agreed to an $80,000 discounted payoff here, which was great news. They needed over $30,000 of, re of repairs. And at the time, I, I don't have the senior lien balance number here, but even just with that 30,000 of repairs needed, the senior could have been zero. And it was a good deal here for us, um, especially after verifying those repairs are legitimate. So we bought the loan for $24,400, which is just shy of 20% of the UPB. We got a better deal on this one because of the uncertainty. You can always maximize value as a seller by minimizing uncertainty. And in this deal, we bought it with a lot of uncertainty. So the price was favorable. And we turned that 24,400 over 16 months and $910 of expenses into an $80,000 payoff, which is a stellar return here. So a couple takeaways. First of all, gather all of the information, find out the borrower's financial situation today and their future prospects to know what they're expecting. Are they getting back to work? Do they have a tax return coming? Understand the property value and the deferred maintenances. So make decisions based on hard data. So this is like a cautionary tale since we didn't know the senior lien balance. We were fortunately able to work out a great deal for us here, but in the future, you wanna make sure to gather as much information as possible so that you're not uh, leaving money on the table or being unrealistic with the outcome that you're expecting from a borrower. Now, next is to negotiate realistically. The borrower did originally push for a $70,000 discount of payoff. Um, we discussed it on our team uh, and I, I like this process. It's not a takeaway here, but it's a great takeaway to have, which is to have a good cop and a bad cop. And the resolution specialist, that's the good cop. The bad cop is the loan committee, the guys behind the scenes who are approving or declining the deals to move forward. So in this case, the, the bad cop, the investment committee, the loan committee was saying, we need 90,000 um, based on the property conditions. And eventually we were able to settle at that $80,000 figure, which is like from the resolution specialist side, going to bat for the borrower, beating up the investment committee a little bit, getting the price down. So in this case, as you can see, there's plenty of profit margin here, but we wanna be realistic with, with the current situation. And we are able to discount the loan by a substantial amount, $47,000 discount on the unpaid principal balance for the borrower and a huge return for the investor at the same time. And that is the definition of a win-win deal. 171% internal rate of return here when you account for the time value of money. So that's it for today's case studies. And of course, on this show, the industry overview, the tech tips, the vendor reviews, the assets for sale and the case studies, as well as the giveaways every single week, uh, last week of the month, uh, last Wednesday of the month for the Be The Bank show. It's always my pleasure to bring this show with you, bring this show to you every single month. Um, next month, we'll have an awesome episode as well. So definitely subscribe to this channel so you're ready for our next call. And if you'd like to get on a private call with me, go to Robbie Max, R-O-B-B-I-E-M-A-X dot you can book dot me 
to get on my calendar for a free 15 minute consultation. I'd be happy to chat with you. So as always, it's my pleasure. I'll be available in the comments on this YouTube video. If you have any questions at all, leave them there. And before we wrap up, we'll check out the feeder. We'll check out the fish. And uh, I see a couple fish up in the left there. I'm gonna sprinkle some food over there for you. No birds. But to wrap up the show today, let's get the uh, koi sounds flowing, the water flowing, and I'm gonna go feed them. And in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week and best of luck in your note investing careers. Thank you.